welcome to this playoff edition of Press Row. Joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. Brackets are out. We know who's playing where. We got our week 11 all set to go. So, which game are we most looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Lima Senior Miamisburg because I'm doing that game. But uh, <laughs> I, I do think there's a lot of a lot of storyline for Lima Senior. Obviously, the excruciating loss at Central Catholic to end the season really ended their year on a down note. Uh, still a chance to redeem themselves in the playoffs by beating Miamisburg. They have to go on the road to do it. Uh, they're facing a team that's diametrically opposite of them offensively, a, a wing T running attack. So it's a contrast in styles. So I think that Lima Senior game, a lot of storylines there. I'm looking forward to Spencerville Jefferson yeah. along the same lines because I'm doing that game for WOSN, <laughs> but also looking forward to it to see how Spencerville rebounds from last week's loss to Jefferson on their home field. Now, obviously, they're flipping where the venue is this week. It's at Jefferson. It'll be at, well, at Stadium Park, and Jefferson will have the home game. I'm very interested to see what adjustments are made by both teams. I mean, you pretty much know what both of these squads are going to do. But what wrinkle gets thrown in that maybe the other one maybe wasn't thinking they would probably see coming into this game? I think this might be the best game in our area, regardless of me broadcasting it or not. Well, and along those same lines, I'm looking forward to Minster Fort Lormy. That was a, a week one matchup, or a week two matchup, I think. Yeah, early season, week yeah. one. Early season matchup, Minster one. Fort Lormy has just grown leaps and bounds since the beginning of the season. Part of it is they've gotten healthy, but it, it'll be interesting to see how Fort Lormy has improved. And Minster, outside of the, the losses to Coldwater and Marin Local, have looked pretty good all season long, too. So I, that one intrigues me, as does the, the all-BVC matchup of Arlington and Lipsick. That was the one I was going to mention, two five and five teams that just played week eight. Lipsick getting the win at Lipsick. It'll be at Lipsick again in week 11. That could be one of the games that really comes down to the wire. So which region is the most difficult of the ones that include local teams? I would think Division wow. Three, Region 10, mm -hmm. with Wapakoneta as the top seed. And then you figure in Salina, you know, they're the sixth seed. They're taking on Trotwood Madison, who is absolutely no slouch. No matter who's the quarterback this week, no matter if the quarterback has left and gone to a different program, who's a Big Ten quarterback a year ago like Messiah DeWeaver, who had verbaled to Michigan and flipped that to Michigan State. He left, and, you know, Wapakoneta saw him last year. I think that just looking at that region one through eight, that's the toughest one without a doubt that involves local teams in my opinion. I don't know. I think uh, Lima Seniors region, region six, would have to get some consideration. Cincinnati LaSalle, many people think is the best team in division two overall period. And the Spartans would have to play them almost certainly if they can get by Miamisburg. I think that's a very tough region there. And I, you know, I think that in the smaller school regions, I always get my regions mixed up the number, but the Marion local, yeah, that's Spencerville, yeah. Jefferson 6, 22. region, 22. 22. Yeah. Yep. I think those are three very high quality teams out of the eight. And you could uh, likely, if you wanted to project Jefferson, Marion local in the regional final, I think that's a tough region too. Yeah, I was looking at that region as well. Obviously, you, only Spencerville or Jefferson can come out of that right. matchup and, you know, projecting down the road against Marin Local. I, I think that one is going to be the most intriguing of all the, the regions as a whole. If Spencerville or Jefferson do win a state title this year, they'll really earn it because before they even get to the state, they'll have to knock off each other and then maybe the defending state champs in Division 7 Marion Local now playing in, in D6. I was also looking at Region 26, which was the Minster Lormy game, and also you have Fort Recovery in there, who's a team to watch, Riverside, Ada. That's actually our heaviest local region, and I think that one should be competitive as well. So on the flip side now, which is the easiest region, including local teams? Well, I, I, <laughs> by I, record, I think it's pretty obvious what you're going to yeah, say. I, right? I think it's, it's, it's Macombs, yeah, yeah. Uh, Region 24. I mean, you've, you've got Lipstick and Arlington in there, which the bottom of the BBC was not nearly as strong, and Macomb has just been dominant. And, you know, the fact they get a, a four and six crest for you to start it off and I, I've been impressed with the Panther defense all season long I, I think they've given up what let's see 17 21 38 uh, about f I think just under 50 points this season if I'm doing my math qu quickly and 21 of those don't forget to carry the one yeah 21 of those coming last week against LB. Liberty Benton and then Marin Local had I think 24, 24. In, in week one and between that bunch of shutouts just 17 points to combine to three opponents so that Macomb defense is pretty stout and you, you just look at the rest of that, that region, I, I don't know if anybody's going to be able to match up with the, the Panthers. From a team that I saw locally, you know, in person this year, I would have to say McComb was one of the most impressive uh, when I saw them back in week five when they took on Lipsick. Uh, was very impressed with them in the weather and in the rain and what they were able to do. You know, we talked about it on Sunday on the playoff preview show, guys. 
multiple fronts offensively, multiple sets, and they can change things up on defense, but they're still going to attack. They're going to pressure the quarterback and pressure your offense into making mistakes. I, I absolutely love what Macomb does, and in my opinion, they've got a good walk to the state semis. Well, and to show how Macomb dominated the BBC, Chris LG, BBC Coach of the Year, Noah De La Serta was the offensive and defensive lineman of the year in the BBC. You had Malachi Abbott, the quarterback, was the offensive player of the year, and they had the defensive player of the year as well. So they swept all yep. the individual awards for the Blanchard Valley Conference. Yeah, but who got athletic trainer of the year? Did they sweep that? Probably. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they did. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think Coldwater's region is not that tough. I think, especially if you compare them to Coldwater, I think they should have a relatively easy walk to the Final Four as far as uh, Division Five is concerned. But there's no question that the answer to this question is Macomb's region. It's not even close. Maybe you guys can answer this. Mark and I were talking about it on Mark's Madness. How does Coldwater get a three seed when they're 10 and 0? Is it because their wins are against smaller schools? Yeah, there's two six and sevens schools, and they're yeah. in a Division Five. That's yep. why they, there was a one year, I think the last time they didn't get in, they were eight and two, I want to yeah. say, maybe even nine and one the last year they did well, not I get mean, in. That would be 27 years ago because they have the longest ago. active streak right. of playoff appearances, and I think they're two years away from tying the all-time record. Yeah, they, uh, they just have a little bit smaller margin for error than some of the teams in their region because most of the teams they play are going to be six and a couple sevens. Well, so. and let's not forget, there's been a couple of years where they've had to play week one on week 11 on the road. Yes, Where they've they been have. a five seed or even a six seed mm -hmm. and have gone on to the state championship game. That's why that Kenton game was so big for them to get several years ago to get a bigger school yes. on their first week uh, game and somebody that should win a lot of games most years. It didn't necessarily work out this year. Uh, but if Kenton had had their typical season or even a winning season, Coldwater might have had the top seed there. All right, interesting. Let's go to college football now. The college football playoff committee announcing its rankings on Tuesday night. So where do we stand on here? What are your thoughts? Here's one thing I absolutely positively take it to the bank will guarantee. Ohio State will not finish the college football rankings third. They'll be first, they'll be second. They will not be third. If they lose, I don't see them climbing back in but they will not finish third because if they win out, they'll have to beat Michigan State. They'll have to beat Michigan. Presumably, they'll beat Iowa in the Big Ten Championship game. That will be enough to impress the committee and move Ohio State up into one of the top two spots. Yeah, especially since that'll be in three consecutive weeks. And Ohio mm -hmm. State fans are some of them in an uproar about this. Uh, you know, people that have common sense really aren't too worried. But you got to remember, last year, this is the same thinking that got Ohio State in last year. Right now, the committee's looking at what have you done to this point? And let's face it, Ohio State has not been all that impressive. They're undefeated. They had some stumbles early. They've looked better lately. But at this point, some teams maybe have a little better resume. It's not that big a deal. If they close strong, like Mark was just talking about, that will boost them up toward the end. And that's all that really matters. I mean, ask Auburn, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss. Ole Miss. They were in this position last year, and, and they didn't get in. So. Yeah, well, uh, Ole Miss was number one yeah. a year well, ago. Mississippi State was or number Mississippi one. Mississippi State was, yeah. yeah. Uh, another telling thing about this initial rankings is you've got both LSU and Alabama in the top four, and they play this weekend. What this is telling you is that the committee is looking at what they've seen thus far. They're not projecting who they right. think will win or who they think might end up in the top four. They're just looking at the body of work for the 2015 season. There are still five more weeks of the year. A lot will, be, will, will shake out. You've got, what is it, 11 undefeated teams in Division 1A and 12 one-loss teams. So that's you know, 23 teams, theoretically, that have got a chance. I, I look at I guess it, 22 now since Toledo lost last night. Right, yeah. yeah. I, I look at it from the standpoint you're going to see one of these two out next week with LSU-Bama, as you mentioned, on them playing on Saturday night. Um, I don't get the love affair with Bama. I think they're, they're a team that's going to lose at least one more game, whether it's this weekend you know, and down the road. I just I don't see it. I still think Baylor, even though Sean Stewart's out for the year, is a better team than Alabama right now. But I'm not taking any credence in what came out last night because it's all going to be in the wash. It's all going to go away. And on December 6th at 12 noon, we'll know what's going on. Do these first rankings come out too early then? Should, should the committee even wait a few more weeks? I mean, I think we all in agreement that it's a good thing not to have these rankings come out in August like the AP and the coaches poll do, but are we even bringing these rankings out too soon, or is this a, a good time to, to gauge the barometer of where the teams are at? I, go ahead, Matt. Are you I was just going to say, it got us talking. We're talking about it right well, now. Which is which the is, point of yeah, college yeah, football. Which is where yeah. I was going, too. I mean, it was said on Wednesday on Dan Patrick's radio show 
Where, where, where can you hear that radio show? Um, 93.1 The Fan, I think. <laughs> okay. And online on, on their app as well. <laughs> but um, that this day, these numbers were taken into effect to get everybody talking about college football today, where they would have the world in the spotlight all to their own. I yeah. think it's, 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 it's an ESPN made-for-TV deal that, you know, I don't know what the rating was for that 30 minutes last night. I'm sure it was huge because everybody and their brother was watching it. But so, so you're saying it was all a conspiracy on ABC and the global world to make sure the Mets lost Game 5 in uh, the World <laughs> Series I'm not on saying, Sunday I'm night not so saying that it wouldn't be Game 6 Tuesday night. I wasn't, up. <laughs> I wasn't going to touch that because I'm sure our boy over here yeah, is still I'm salty. I'm still hurting. Over you know, after, after they bat around and <laughs> got to watch you know, them score five runs and watch night. Harvey get say out there. Well, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, that was, we had a good run, right, Mark? You, sure you almost had it right. Yeah. You almost had it right. Yeah. All right, in pro sports, we'll we'll stick with pro sports and big game Thursday for the Bengals and the Browns. Bengals are undefeated. We've been saying all season that, you know, we're not sure who's going to beat them. The Steelers was a potential opponent that we thought might give them trouble. They got past them. What do we see for the browns Bengals game Thursday night? Any chance Johnny Football gets it done? I you see, mean the circus? The I circus see a lot of confused time. people trying to figure out where the NFL Network is. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is the first game that's on NFL yeah, Network. I, you yeah. know, no broadcast TV on that game. There's nothing logically to tell you that the Browns should be competitive in this game by NFL standards, but – Somehow, they always seem to have something for the Bengals. Last year, Johnny Manziel started against the Bengals. They got shut out. Uh, these Thursday night games are always screwy. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't write anything off. The Bengals have to show up and take care of business, and they should know that better than anybody because they lost to the Browns last year. But, you know, the whole Johnny circus, you know, I, I don't know if that's going to be a positive, but maybe it is. Who knows? Mark, what does that say right there? The circus being in Cincinnati. So the elephants are coming out. You, you got the peanut shells all over the floor. I like it. The yep. clowns are going to be on the field. Yep. And there's going to be two traded offensive linemen that nearly got to almost <laughs> <Yeah>. traded <laughs> offensive linemen <laughs> wearing Cleveland uniforms as well. I'm tired of Manziel. I, I don't get the hype. I think Mike Pettin feels like he's, you know, shackled, so to speak, that he has this guy on his roster and his buffoonery that his Johnny football or whatever. I said it two years ago. I'll say it again. He'll be in Canada within three years. Well, he'll be in Cincinnati Thursday night. Yes. We'll, and we'll get to see. If he might be in the lake. He might all. be in the river it too. Might be. I, I don't expect him to go to Canada. I think he'll, if, if he's not in the NFL, he'll be out of the game completely. Wow. This should be a good one. I think last year's game was a Thursday night. Game. It was. It was. Right? They had a Thursday yeah. night game. Yeah, yeah, 52 weeks ago. Right. Was it exactly a year ago? All right. Well, Bengals have been playing well. We'll see how they fare against the Browns this week. And that's going to do it for this week's Press Row. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll be right back here next week to break down the Week 11 playoff games.